Hello, Shoya here. I am a Japanese carpenter. This time, I'd like to replace the floor of a Japanese veranda and engawa. I'll move the outlet in the flooring to the pillar. Then, I'll make a storage shelf and place it in the back of the drawing room. This time, I'll renovate the floor of the engawa. Instead of removing the existing flooring, I'll put new flooring on top of it. The original floor used a sturdy, white floorboard. First, I'll check the position of the joists. Now, I'm hitting the floor to listen for the foundation. Thump thump, I can hear a low pitched sound. When I hit it with a hammer. On this side, I hear a high pitched solid sound. Here's the foundation. Measure the board. If I don't measure a few boards to know how wide it needs to be, in the end, I may need to insert a narrow board, or else the width may not fit at the protruding corners. So, the first measurement is important. I put nails in the original floor. I'll use thick 50mm nails. If I don't nail these firmly, it will cause floor noise. I'll remove the floor outlet. There is a split on the pillar, so I'll move the outlet to the base of it. Next, I measure the board's position lengthwise. It's a 4 meter board, but I can't use it like 4 meter, 4 meter. 2 meter, 4 meter, 2 meter, 4 meter. I'll shift the boards every 2 meters by the Ranko Bari method. The material of the flooring is Japanese Cypress. It's 15 millimeter thickness, 12 centimeter width, and 4 meter length. There are no knots. I'll install this in the vertical direction. First, do the kubikiri on the overhanging pillar. Kubikiri means to cut off the pillar a bit so that I can insert the floorboard. The old pillars are uneven or the threshold shifted like this. For that reason, it's hard to install it. I'll do kubikiri to make a gap. Along the engawa, stretch a thread. If I don't do this first, it won't be straight. The reference sign will not be at the right angle if I don't check it carefully, because there are so many floorboards. So check and draw the reference sign accurately. Then I'll check the warps of the threshold based on the markings. Even if I did a kubikiri, I didn't cut it off wide. So, I'll cut off the overlapping part. Cut the floorboard with a circular saw according to the warp of the confirmed threshold. It's warped, so I can't use a guide ruler. I'll leave a bit of wood on and finish it with a hand plane.
I left some extra wood, so I'll adjust it with a hand plane. It's hard to cut it neatly with only a circular saw, so I'll plane it with a hand plane several times and then install it. Now attach it temporarily. It doesn't fit at once, but I'll plane it several times to make it fit. Now I'll install the flooring. I'll use a urethane bond this time. The original floor is still glossy, so I use urethane glue because it doesn't stick to the woodworking glue. There were warps on the floorboard. By screwing diagonally across the cut end, the warp and gap portion will fit neatly. I'll use a floor tacker that is 4mm wide and 38mm thick. The first floorboard is difficult if installed longitudinally. It will be about 6 to 8 floorboards, so it's hard. But once I have installed one row, the rest will be relatively easy to repeat. Check the dimensions and cut the protruding corner part of the drawing room. If I use a circular saw to cut it out, it won't help because extra wood remains, and I can't use a hand plane on the inside corner, so I'll cut it with a hand saw to finish it. The width of the drawing room part is narrow, so I can't use a floor tacker. I'll use a staple gun from the top instead. Since the troublesome part is over, it should get easier. Now, I'll install the floorboard on the last corner. I'll use an aluminum L-shaped angle. Therefore, the floorboard's width should be wide enough to reach the angle steel of the existing sash. Then, the new angle steel will be on top of the existing one, and it will hide the side part. The pillar of the last corner can be done using kubikiri like the first one. So, I must check the dimensions and fit them in one shot. If I overdo it, it'll crack easily, so I'll install it carefully. Install the angle steel. In the old days, there was no good angle steel like this. It was introduced recently. There are holes for the screws, so it's useful. It's not sold in home center stores, but you can buy it at a window supply store. This is a 40-year-old hacksaw. Use a hacksaw by pushing. Cutting aluminum is primitive, but it cuts beautifully. If I use a sander, it'll split and then it's hard to make it beautiful.
cock between the new and old angle steels just in case. It's a clear coat, so it'll be transparent when it dries. This is just one simple outlet, so I'll do it myself. Electricity is invisible, so it's a little scary. When I was a junior high school student a long time ago, I held an electric cable in my mouth and peeled off the rubber insulation by pulling it. And the other side of the cable was still plugged into the outlet. The 100 volt directly hit my teeth, and it felt as though my teeth were floating. I remember I couldn't eat for about 3 days. Since then, working with electricity is a little scary for me. Apply a clear gloss oil this time as well. It's a type that spreads evenly over the whole floor and wipes and polishes at the end. I'm not good at painting no matter how many times I do it. Enough time has passed, so I'll wipe it off and polish it. It's already dark outside. And last, I'll make a storage box to place it in the corner of the Ingawa. It's a simple storage box with four shelves. I cut it with a circular saw, but it's a hassle to use a hand plane at the edge. So I'll use an electric planer in the workshop. Now rough cut the lumber. I'll cut two vertical boards, four shelf boards, and one bottom board. I'll cut five shelf boards of the same length. Attach the baseboard only under the bottom board. I think it looks good when it's raised a little. In this case, I'll cut it after screwing it in. That way, the lengths will match. Now assemble it. I'm going to place this storage shelf in the corner of the Engawa. The side is not visible, so I'll screw it down directly from the side with long screws. I didn't make it into a video, but the back wall of the stadium has changed and managed to clean it neatly. I made the back wall with sapwood and hardwood alternately, so my eyes flicker when I see it on the screen. I regret that I didn't use one type of wood, but doesn't it look neat? The material of this storage box is 30mm thick laminated cedar. I'll put the same cedar board on the backboard. Now I've finished making the storage box. I intentionally didn't put a shelf board on the top 
It's free size, so it can hold objects of various sizes. I want to paint the storage box. It can be used as it is. There is a gap next to the storage box for two fittings. Now I've finished making the storage shelves and renovating the flooring of the Engawa. The cypress board is beautiful. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.